Greetings! In this lesson, we take a look at how we can use Sequencer to create our own short movies. This tool can be used to make our cinematics and our games, but also to render our shots for film production. We will first cover how we can make a simple sequence, and then we will use a master sequence to manage multiple shots, and we'll conclude with the rendering output. So without further ado, let's jump right in. To start this out, let's create a folder to store our sequences. In here, we can reach the Cinematics menu and select Add Level Sequence. Save it in our folder and you'll be prompted with the Sequencer window. If it's not showing, make sure the sequence is placed in the level and click Open Level Sequence in the Details panel. This will be our first shot. Before doing anything, we can help ourselves with the cinematic viewport. Go up in the view mode and activate cinematic viewport. We now have a timeline at the bottom and some useful guides to help with composition. We can create a camera from the current view by hitting the camera button. The camera will be added as an actor to sequencer and you are now controlling the camera, so make sure to eject before moving around and losing your framing. We will now animate that. Place the playback at frame 0 and select your camera. Scroll down to the transform property and add a keyframe using the small plus button. Let's move the playback at our last frame and we can now expand the transform property to reveal our axes. I'll move the camera on the Y and I will place a keyframe here. To play back the result, toggle your camera icon. Use the up arrow to jump to start and spacebar to play. We can refine our framing by reaching the composition guides top right of the viewport and now I'm refining the rotation of the camera and I'm adding a transform keyframe. You can activate auto key to make sure you don't forget to place a keyframe when adjusting. Sequencer has a graph editor to adjust easing. Click the graph icon and a window will appear. To display curves, first click the channel you want to edit and select the keyframe to move its handles. We can now change the interpolation if you want something more constant. Select your keyframes and right click to select Linear. Let's take care of our character. This is a skeletal mesh that can be added to our sequence to be controlled. To do this, click the green plus track button, Actor to Sequencer and your selected actor. Now we need an animation. Click the plus track on Animation and select one of the available animations. Move the clip and you can play back again. Ok, let's add a new camera using the same technique as before. Things seems out of focus here. While your camera is selected, use the Details panel to go into the Focus settings to activate Draw Debug Focus Plane. Now change the manual focus distance and toggle off the plane when you're done. While I'm at it, I'm zooming in by changing the current focal length. Our second camera is set and let's add it to our camera cuts so it can be part of the final shot. Place the playback where you'd like to engage the second camera and use Ctrl dot to cut and trim after. Alternatively, use Ctrl comma to cut and trim before the playhead. Playback to see cameras changing. Going back to our character, we can add animation tracks and blend between them by dragging the small triangle on the edge. We can also right click in our clips and in properties we can access various options such as play rate, play reverse, ins and out. Now let's get more creative. Add lights to your scene and use them in your sequencer for accents. Any property can be animated in sequencer. In the details panel, a keyframe icon will be displayed to quickly add a key to a property. 
if for some reason you'd like an actor to be invisible and appear only at a certain moment, right click your actor and convert to spawnable. This will add a track with a true or false value that can be animated. Keep your sequence organized by adding folders and grouping your actors. That first sequence is getting better, but continuing adding camera and keyframes in here can quickly become cumbersome as you need to move a lot of things around. For an easier process, we can use master sequences to play multiple level sequence. We can add a master sequence using the cinematics menu and a few options will appear. You can rename the master sequence and add some more shots. I choose not to for management reasons. Open the master sequence and set your end frame using the right click options. Click the plus shots and select the level sequence of your choice. This way, you can add new shots, cut and trim them without worrying about keyframes. You can easily access your shots by double clicking on a clip to enter it. You can add a fade track to animate fades, ins and out of your cinematic. Adding multiple audio tracks is also possible, allowing a bit of sound design to happen. We are now ready to render our short film. To do so, click the clapperboard icon. Starting from the top, you can select your output format. Here I will use a PNG sequence, but you could also output custom render passes to further composite these shots. I'll set the render resolution to 1080p, set the output path, and down at the bottom you can manually set ins and outs, and warming ups to pre-simulate particle systems so they look good from the very first frame. When all set, hit capture movie and let it do its thing. To see the final result, I use Blender and I import an image sequence and voila! So this wraps it up for this lesson. Now that you have a broad overview of this tool, you should be ready to render some really cool animations. In the next lesson, we will get to know how to properly create models to be used in Unreal at their best. So, until next time, take care and have fun with it.